Folks, it is possible. This past week, I had a chance to set up my personalized HRTF at Sony Studios in their 360 lab in Culver City, which also does Atmos, by the way, for use with the Sony 360 virtual mixing environment technology. Basically, a real immersive studio space in your headphones. But don't be fooled. This is no fancy marketing of an IR-based studio in your headphones plug-in thing. This is the real thing, folks. Hang on, I'll explain. Greetings, I am Pat and I work closely with major and indie labels and artists, helping them reach more fans and make more money. And today I'll tell you how Sony's 360 virtual mixing environment blew my mind how I use it, what are its shortcomings, and why its future is very promising, but only if a couple of things are worked out. Also, need to mention that this is not a sponsored video. But first, what is it? From the horse's mouth. Sony's 360 virtual mixing environment is a spatial sound technology that uses headphones to reproduce the sound field environment of a reference studio with high precision. 360 VME supports creators by reproducing the sound field of a multi-channel studio with headphones so that they can create spatial sound content from virtually anywhere. Creators can accurately measure their hearing characteristics in the studio and create customized 360 VME profile data. Then, using the VME software and their favorite headphones, they can mix in immersive audio, Atmos 2, as if they were in a particular room with a particular set of speakers. Even at the beach, people! Apparently, it was developed in-house by Sony R&D because of the restrictions on Sony engineers being able to mix at the mixing stages during COVID. And then Sony realized they had a gem in their hands, so they made this into a product. I spoke with the kind Sony folks at AES in New York, where they were demoing the tech and also had ear scans going on at Battery Studios, which I was too late for, unfortunately, but I was lucky enough that the following week I would be in LA for meetings with my friends at Rhino at the Warner Music Group. Some really, really cool Atmos releases coming, mixed by yours truly, by the way, but more on that in later videos. So the Sony folks were able to hook me up and do the ear scan and profile at Sony Studios in Culver City. Thanks, Kevin. So I walked into the studio, everything was set up, including the chair at the sweet spot. Then Kevin placed a couple of tiny microphones in my ears and played short bursts of pink noise through the different speakers. Then we did the same thing while I had headphones on. It was a very smooth process. Then, at what seemed to be the end of the process, and while I had my headphones on, Kevin played some pink noise through the center speaker. I took my headphones off and very politely said, Hey Kevin, sorry man, but you seem to have left the center speaker on while we were doing the headphone thing. He looked at me, smiled, and said, Nope. That was your headphones. What? Guys, I cannot describe this. You have to hear it. My mind was blown. Then Kevin played some music and I was taking the headphones on and off to compare. This was nothing like the binaural fall downs of mixes I've been listening to when mixing. This was something entirely different. Well, not different. These were the speakers in the room, but in my headphones, the levels matched the panning. Unreal, but real. 
You have to hear this to believe it. I was dumbfounded. Now, when I want to check out how my mixes would sound in Sony's room, I can play them through the VME in my profile, though I would love to get the living room studio set up for this so I can be taking my studio on the road when I am traveling. But, as with everything in life, tech or otherwise, there are some shortcomings. No room is perfect, so what you get is the room with all its quirks and imperfections. Bass and air movement is another issue, since that experience can only be had with speakers, especially for the low end, which you feel as well as hear, which is not the same in headphones. Another issue is you have to go into a particular studio to get your ears scanned and that cannot be your own at this time, at least not on a large scale or for everyone. So access to this, you understand, will be limited unless Sony comes up with a way, a kit or something, that you can scan your own ears in your own room, again, on a large scale. This is currently in sort of a beta period, but there will be costs associated with using the tech. Hopefully an affordable solution, and for me at least, not another subscription. As with anything that tricks your brain, there are some effects on the body using this technology. I have not experienced anything like that, but I also take frequent breaks while I'm mixing, which might be the key to avoiding any potential issues. A couple of great things and very not like traditional Sony, which would make this a home run, is that the software is platform agnostic, meaning you do not have to be doing Sony 360 reality audio only. You can be working in Atmos and using this, which is great and should remain that way if more people are to adopt this in their workflows. Also, for this, we used Sony's MDR MV1 headphones, which are my headphones of choice for immersive audio right now, but any pair of headphones from any brand would work. No pods though at this time. Sony's 360 virtual mixing environment is taking mixing immersive audio in headphones to the next level. If you need some info on mixing immersive in headphones, check out this video right here.